At this stage, we're getting ready to cut the jaw assembly from the remainder of the bar. We can cut to our advantage. We'll notice on here that the one flat surface of the jaw assembly is laying flat against the anvil and the slope of the scarf is coming up from the anvil. We want to cut from that flat side creating the slope for the scarf. At the very least I have to cut off everything that's been forged to leave me with good unforged stock for the next pair of tongs. The remainder here it's just a question of what forge you're working in. A gas forge, you may want a little more length. For my coke forge, I'm good about a quarter of an inch past the forging there. So here's our flat side, we've left everything that was forged and we've come into clean bar stock. We've cut from the flat side, leaving us a slope that will become the scarf. The trick now is to avoid hitting that corner and elongating that angle so it becomes long and thin. So for me I keep the corner down as I hit and I work on top of the slope. It's easy for me to hit here and make the, the slope a little less steep. It would be hard if it was long and thin to make it more steep. I've come out of the fire, I've got both chalk marks up, so as I leave the fire both chalk marks are up. I'm going to make my way to the anvil as quickly as possible. You notice I'm not moving around the anvil, I'm trying to stay on my side of the anvil, but I am moving my arm across. So I'm going to move my arm and I'm going to touch the edge of the anvil with the jaw. I'm going to touch the edge of the anvil with the reins. I'm going to lower the jaw now I'm going to lower the reins and you can see I can fuss with the reins just a little bit to get them in the right place. I can let go with the tongs, I can pick up my hammer and I can start my weld. My first blow is on top and then for me I like to come down the face a little bit, turn the bar over and then work on the other side.
I'm getting very close when I'm drawing out the reins to the nick in my rein bar. Unfortunately at this stage the piece is too long for my forge. What I'm going to do now is put a convenience bend in here, get this out of the way, heat this area, cut this and then continue to draw this out when I'm holding on to the jaw assembly. With the nick in my bar up, I'm going to put a convenience bend in and then I'm just going to come here and I can cut this without gravity affecting that too much. Once you've drawn out your first reins, park the rear of the boss against the step and mark the length of the reins. That way you can equal it when you go to work on your second rein. When you come to your second rein, again park the boss or the rear of the boss on the step, measure out and cut off everything that's in excess of your needs. You'll want to go into the assembly process with the jaws and the reins aligned and you can see here that they're not, they're a fraction out. By aligning the jaws it helps the assembly process and it also gives you the chance to break free some of the flux that may have stuck to the jaw or the jaw boss assembly during the welding process. Here are both sides of my pair of tongs. You'll notice the bosses are about equal in character as are the holes. The jaws are somewhat matched. I have one that's about a sixteenth of an inch longer than the other. I have a choice now of drawing out the shorter one, which I'm not inclined to do, or rasping off the longer one, which is what I will do. Uh, if I draw out the shorter one, the jaw may look too weedy when I go to finish these and put them together. When I take my two sides and place them together, one on top of the other, the holes aligned, they're about matched. And you can notice now the advantage of keeping everything straight. If you find yourself in the position where you've got a rasp inside the boss here, uh, to make the jaws fit, then I would suggest that you didn't pull enough of the jaw onto the anvil when you set down for the boss initially. Just pull another sixteenth or so of the jaw onto the anvil when you set down for the boss. When we're looking at the length of the rivet, we know that the boss are each three-eighths of an inch thick, so we have three-quarters of an inch here. I have a spacer block that's about five-eighths of an inch thick. The space of the block will allow one end of the rivet to hang while I rivet the other end through. So I need twice the length of the, or twice the height of the spacer block. So an inch and a quarter for the spacer block plus three quarters of an inch here for a two inch rivet. Now let's see what we can do here. I'm just going to pop my rivet in. Place that. And there I am ready to go. Now when I rivet I'm going to cradle the bottom rein. I'm going to put all my pressure on the top rein. You notice I'm sort of pushing with my thumb here and what I don't want is a gap between the two because I'll spread the rivet between the gaps. I'm pushing down with the top. I'm going to drive this side down, not all the way. I'm just going to get it enough so it's fixed. Then I'm going to turn it around and as I'm driving this side down, sorry this side down, this side will be flattened some more. Before I go into the riveting process, I'm going to come and flare both sides. So the rivet won't fall through the tongs in the fire. After I've flared one end of the rivet, I'm going to go to the fire and heat the rivet. I'm going to push the rivet all the way through the tongs. I'm going to put this down in the fire so it gets super hot. The mass of the boss is going to keep the other side of the rivet cool. When I come out of the fire I'm going to turn it over and drive the cold side of the rivet down till it touches the anvil and now I can start to set my top rivet. Don't go all the way, just take it down to about halfway and then set the other side. Then address accordingly.
cradling the bottom reins, putting pressure in the top. When you're adjusting the jaws, you're going to be given a spacer block, three quarter by quarter, I believe. The first thing I would do with that is write hot, lest I forget. First thing I'm going to do is align the jaws side to side. I'm going to open the jaws up. See, they got a little better there. And I'm going to put my piece in the jaws, get it right to the root. Now I'm going to close the back and then close the front. Again, make sure that everything is lined up. And at this stage, I'll take another heat around the back of the, uh, the boss here on the reins, and I'll go to the vise with the spacer in the jaws and adjust the reins. As I go to adjust the reins, you notice I've got the vise jaws spaced approximately correctly, and I have two scrolling forks or dog wrenches ready to adjust the reins. I need two to make sure I can control both by the jaws and the orientation of the rein. When you're quenching the ends, the, uh, the jaw and the boss assembly in the slack tab, make sure you keep moving the reins backwards and forwards and that will loosen up that fit so that when you go to give them to the, the judge, the reins will open nicely and freely. Here are the ends of my reins. You'll notice they're offset from each other by about half an inch or so. That enables me to bend both of these out and be able to slip a tong ring on without having to fight to get over both ends at the same time. One last thing before we finished. Check the fit. Make sure it's everything you want it to be. And give it a good brush with the wire brush. You're not allowed to put any finish on for the competition in Salt Lake, so it's as forged. When I was punching my holes, I took my normal punch and I polished the end bright. I heated a bar with a hole that best represents the hole that I require, and I placed my punch in that hole and draw colour on the end of my the working end of my punch. Now when I go to punch my pair of tongs. I can just drive that in until I get up to that colour mark and then come out. And I know that that should be somewhere close to my final dimension. I always put a slight chamfer on the end of my rivet just in case I need a little clearance to be able to go through. You see that one's a little tight. <laughs> 